Uh, this is Jean Lithgow, and I'd like to welcome you to Rockford Public Library's virtual lunch and listen, lunch and learn. Uh, today's topic is genealogy from home using library databases with your Rockford Public Library card. So in other words, yes, you can continue your genealogy even if your local library is closed. Okay. All right, this will work. All right, I need to work on my genealogy. My library is closed. What are my resources? Well, first of all, you want to go to www.rockfordpubliclibrary.org. And I always hope that you have that marked as one of your favorites. Okay, you can access some of the following, you can access the following databases. Ancestry, we have the library edition. America's Genealogy Bank, and you actually don't need a card to get into that one. Chicago Tribune's Historical Archives. And again, Heritage Quest, for which no card is needed. And Newsbank, which are papers 1855 to date. We actually have microfilm for Rockford newspapers all the way back to 1840. So if you needed some of that information, you're probably going to have to wait till we're open again, because that's on microfilm. But that's okay. Still, I wanted to make sure that you knew we had that. Okay, how do you access the databases? Go to our website. Put your cursor on Research It, and there'll be a drop down menu. Click on A to Z list of databases. And before I go any further, I want to remind you these are our taxes, our library taxes at work. So please, let's use them. We have a lot of wonderful databases. I'm only going to concentrate on one or two today, but do take time to check them out. Okay, you've got your A to Z list, and you're going to click on Ancestry Library Edition. Then you get a screen, and you'll want to enter your library card number, tab down, and enter your PIN number. Click on Login. Enter doesn't work. You don't want to know how many times I've hit enter and I'm staring at the screen and saying to myself, oh, you need to hit login. So click on login. And then when the ancestry screen comes up, you want to click on begin search. So this is the first screen you're going to get. And you would click on the begin search. And this is the screen you're, this is the top half of the screen you're going to see. And I just want to mention a few things. On the right hand side, they list a number of special collections if you wanted to narrow down, or if you wanted to go right to census or immigration, you could do that as well. And then they show uh, exploring by location. The next screen is the second half of this page because it was too big to get on one screen with, with edit people to read. So these are the different states that they cover and uh, territories as well. And then down at the bottom on the right hand side, after listing all of the different reference ones, they have an entry, view all in card catalog. And I want to talk about that before I go back to talking about the databases. Uh, and even before that, they also have research aids. So you could click on any one of these and learn starting information, uh, census information, beyond the basics, immigration, military, and ethnic histories. So these are all good things to read. And if you're at any database, it's a good idea to look at it and see what they offer. Although most of us really want to go charging off and searching. They also have a section where they list a few charts and forms. So you could make some free copies of the ancestral chart, your research extract, your family group sheet. And I know I talked about the ancestral chart and the family group sheet last week. There's a research calendar there. You could keep a record of your correspondence with people and what you've learned from your sources. There'll be some other materials that we'll go back to later on. Okay. Yes. Okay, there should have been one screen before that. Oh, 
I'm going the wrong way, just a moment, sorry. Okay, if you clicked on view all in card catalog, they have, it's a way to search all their databases. What I like about it is, oh, if I can't remember the database I want to use, I can go down to the keyword. And in this case, I've typed in Illinois State Census. We all know that the federal government has taken the census every 10 years beginning in 1790. And I'm sure all of us have already filled ours out this year for 2020. But not everyone knows that some of the states did censuses on the fives, that is like 1825, 1835, and so on. Illinois did that from 1825 through 1865. So sometimes you can narrow down where people are between the federal censuses. Uh, Wisconsin, I think, did it up to 1905. So it's kind of fun to see what's out there. So I've typed in Illinois State Census and I've clicked search and I'm given actually different selections. So I went down and I clicked on the Illinois State Census Collection 1825 to 1865. And just for fun, I went in and I typed Thatcher Blake just to see what would happen. And here we have the 1855 Illinois State Census. And then down here, just one from the bottom on this screen, here we have Thatcher Blake, it shows how many males of specific ages, two, two free white males there, um, and it looks like three females for a total of five, which matches. And then we skip over to the bottom column, which gave his worth, how much money he had. It looks like $225, which not bad in 1855. And they, they would ask other questions. Sometimes, did you have cattle? That sort of thing. But this is just another aid to look about. And again, this is through Ancestry. I've seen it in other places, but most of the time, Ancestry is, is nice and clear. Okay, so I want to take you through a, through a search in Ancestry. And I thought it might be a lot of fun to do Rockford's own Robert Tinker builder of Tinker Swiss Cottage and uh, at one point the youngest mayor in Rockford known as the boy mayor. So let's say that all I knew about Robert at this point was his first and last name, which I've entered. I put in where he might have lived. And yes, I know his second wife's first name was Jesse. So I typed that in and then I clicked search. Okay, and after I clicked search, there were a lot of entries, not all of them are we going to look at today. The first one that comes up is actually the death index. It gives his full name, Robert Hall Tinker. So if we didn't know his middle initial or his middle name, now we do. His spouse was Jesse Hurd Tinker, his mother, Mary Wood, his father, Reuben Tinker, and yes, he was born in Honolulu in 1836, and he died December 31st, 1924. And actually he was born December 31st, 1836, because we'll see that information later on. And then further down, there was also a find a grave entry, and then some of the census information. Uh, the first census they show is 1920, which is actually the last census in which Tinker would appear. Okay. And this is the transcription that Ancestry has done, listing um, Robert Tinker, occupation, retired manufacturer, uh, and the file number. That's that F FHL file number is actually for the Family History Library uh, from the Church of Latter-day Saints. Now, they don't have an image. It's just a text-only collection. 
I can tell you the library does have microfilm for Ilan, for Winnebago, um, some births, deaths, and marriages. So we do have the deaths 1877 up till about, I think it's September of 1935 or so. So yes, one could, when the library reopens, you can come in and look at Mr. Tinker's death certificate if you want to, but you don't have to. Okay, next. And I, if I clicked on the find a grave entry, we'd find pictures of his tombstone and that he is indeed buried up at Greenwood. And if we go to the next screen, um, which is from Find a Grave, we have a lovely photograph of the Tinker Monument, which is pretty good sized. And actually, I drove by it yesterday. I had to go out and make sure somebody was buried where I thought they were, and they were. But I drove right by it and go, oh, I just looked that up the other day. So that was kind of fun. And these entries are filled in by volunteers. And most of the time, they're accurate. Uh, if you have a family member and you see some information that is incorrect, you can go to find a grave. You might have to register to be able to contact those people. But you can certainly contact them and ask them to correct ent any entries or add to the entries if you have additional information. And most people are pretty good about that. So just to let you know that those are some of the options. Okay, we mentioned that the first entry in the list there was the 1920 census. Well, here we are down at the bottom of the census. One of the things I like that Ancestry has done lately is they've started highlighting the people on the census and that makes it really easy for us. So down there we have Robert H. Tinker, who's head of household. Um, he's married. Um, He's born in Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, he's listing his folks as being born from Connecticut. Um, the last column that shows up, ask what your job is, his says none because by then he's actually retired. He's got plenty of money, people don't worry about him. And then right below it, there's Jesse D and Theodore and they have Theodore correctly identified as their adopted son probably hear a little more about that. Every census asks different questions, which is what makes them so much fun. Now, I had shown you earlier where Ancestry listed some basic uh, genealogy forms. When you go to click on the census to see the actual census, right below it, there's a place you can click for an empty form. This is the printed form. So if you have trouble Reading some of the questions on a specific census, you can go to this form and read it. Many people also like to print it out and maybe handwrite or type on paper, whatever works for you, the different forms. Fill them out yourself just to have an extra source. Okay, we found that Rockford, Robert had died. The Rockford Republic of January 2nd, 1925 reported that Tinker had died December 31st on the last day of the old year. And uh, he talks about he'd also done landscape working. He'd been on the park board for a long time, born in Honolulu. The family then came back to the East Coast and here's a, here's a photograph of Mr. Tinker. And uh, he went to Europe, 1862 to, uh, to 1863. And then when he came home, he won the election for mayor in 1875 and served for one term. Was also involved with the Rockford Water Power Company, Chicago Rockford and Northern Railroads, later part of the Burlington. Um, married to first to Mrs. Mary Dormanny, widow of J.H. Manny, the pioneer inventor on April 24th, 1870. And then after her death, he married 
Jesse Dorherd, who was his second wife. Jesse was actually a niece of Mary Manny, so they were they were uh, relatives. And then she adopted Theodore. Actually, the story is that Tinker was away on business, and Mary went down to Peoria and adopted Theodore. And when Tinker came home, she said, "Here's our son Theodore." So that must have been an interesting family conversation. Okay, and then later, uh, and then Jessie continued to live in Tinker Swiss Cottage, and uh, she died in 1942, March 31st, 1942, in the 30-room cottage, 31-room cottage, where she was married in 1904. And she had been, she was 83 years old and had lived there. And there was also a housekeeper. But here's a picture of Mrs. Tinker and her dog, Janet. So, and of course the house was virtually unchanged and was then soon after she died was left to the Rockford Park District. Which is why we have the treasure we have today. Okay, some of the other entries for Tinker I thought you might be interested in looking at. Uh, people don't tend to think of the draft as being a part of American life in, until the 20th century. Well, in 1863, the Union, uh, the federal government did have a draft registration. And some of us may have seen our ancestors on that draft registration. Here is Mr. Tinker. Um, the left-hand column gives the residence down at the bottom where Rockford is. At the so here's Robert Tinker. At that point, he was 26. He was a clerk. He was unmarried. And he lists himself as being born in New York. Either he couldn't remember or... I really don't know why, because he certainly should have known he was born in Honolulu. Okay, you can also find family trees at Ancestry. And I want to mention this about family trees online everywhere. First of all, at Ancestry, no one is checking the work of the person who puts the family tree into their collection. Sometimes they're very right, sometimes they're not so accurate. And again, you should be able to contact that person and say, here are what my sources say. And if you get, if it works out well, they'll say, oh, wow, thank you for the information. You might also get someone who says, look, I did all this work and I'm standing by my work. And then I'm not sure what you can do. But one of the things I want to mention here in this description of Robert uh, he says he married Mary Dorr, April 24, 1870. Well, that's correct. And that Mary Dorr was her maiden name. And then she was Mary Manny. I would have liked to have seen a more complete entry for that. And it's the same thing with Jesse, in that they list Jesse Dorr, her maiden name, and not her first marriage uh, with Mr. Hurd, who died many years before uh, Robert and Jesse were married. And then it says, and they had one son together. Uh, yes, that is legally correct. But as we have seen from the census record, and there are other sources as well, Theodore was their adopted son. I think it would have been nice to be a little more complete about that. But that's, that's me. I, I'm allowed to be picky about genealogy. And so, and in fact, they just list that you can go down and see the timeline, which often includes their sources. So, and then you have a way to verify their sources. Go back and look at people's sources. See what they've done. See how they've interpreted it. Okay, just for fun, this is the 1850 census. And uh, the Tinkers, Reuben and Mary Tinker with their kids are living out east. I think they're in Connecticut at that point. but. I wouldn't, no, they're not. Anyhow, there's Reuben, who was a clergyman, who was born in Massachusetts, as was his wife, Mary. Their first, the several first children are all born in the Sandwich Islands, which is what uh, 
most English speaking speaking people were still calling the Hawaiian Islands at that point. It's a little, it's right around that time period when uh, the Hawaiian Islands begin to call themselves the Hawaiian Islands. But sometimes it takes people a while to change the name. So the children, Samuel, Joseph, Sarah, Robert, and Mary were all born in the Sandwich Islands. Here's little Abba, who was actually born on the ocean or born while they were traveling on the ocean. So that's an interesting thing. She probably got asked that question a lot. Where did you say you were born? I was born on the ocean. And then Elizabeth, who was born in Ohio. So that gives you a sample of the different people. And it looks like they have a servant, Jane. I'm sure Mary Tinker needed all the help she could get. The 1860 census, uh, at which point Robert is in Rockford. Uh, Mary Manny, his future first wife, is head of household, and she's from New York. There are other people living in the household. This is not yet Tinker Cottage. Would have been Mr. Holland's house, which the Mannies had purchased and is no longer extant. So there's Robert listed as a bookkeeper. They had a, ser a servant, he had, a, or Mary had a servant, Jane, on a servant, Chandler. And then there's another bookkeeper, William, also living there. And then some other fans, some other names listed. And yet another servant, Margaret. So Mrs. Manny had quite an extensive household. And by then, she is a widow. Uh, the 1870 census is on two pages. Robert is at the bottom of the one page as head of household. He's listed as a reaper manufacturer born in the Sandwich Islands. So he has a fair amount of money there. Um, Mary is listed as keeping house. And then I think from the ages, this is probably her brother Josephus and his wife, Hannah. And then there's a domestic servant, Dagmar from Ireland, Dagnan from Ireland, Bridget Dagnan from Ireland. John Baxter was their coachman. And living next door, we have an Edward Dorr, who's a farmer, and a Mary Rexford, who's the housekeeper. So from that, we might infer that Edward is possibly a widower. We don't know yet. Um, then they have a 12, there's a 12 year old living with them, plus another handful of doors. Seth, who is working on the farm, uh, 20. And so these are probably their children. And there is Jet, 11 year old Jessie Dorr. So she, she was just living next door. And then I skipped, I skipped the 1880 census. And then there, as we know, there is no 1890 census or only teeny tiny fragments left because right after, right, oh, in the twenties, right after Congress voted to have the 1890 census microfilmed, there was a fire and most of the census records went up in flames. It wasn't so much the fire as the water damage that made it impossible to save collection. So basically we all know there's no 1890 census. So we go to alternate sources. We might look at city directories. We might look at tax records. We would check birth and marriage records that might or might not have addresses. So there are other ways, newspapers, of course. So we have to juggle around to find that 1890 census or find information pertinent to where people were living in 1890. However, by 1900, there's Robert Tinker again. Uh, this, this is a fun census because they actually list the month and the year you were born, gives your age, married, how many years you've been married. At that point, it says 30. Uh, and again, living with them is Hannah Dorr and Marcia, who's a niece, 
Uh, and there's Jesse Hurd, who's a niece. And then two servants. So that gives you some other clues. So families live, you didn't necessarily have all these nuclear families that uh, were so popular starting after World War II. People were living together, several relatives at a time. Okay, 1910, there's Robert Tinker. And as we know from the earlier sources, he and Mary had died and Tinker marries Jesse in 1904. And there's little Theodore, their adopted son, and they have one servant, Swedish. Uh, Swedish servants were getting to be very popular at this point of time in Rockford. Now, just to show you other indexes that show up in Ancestry, the index for the Illinois County marriages, here's Robert and Mary Manny's index and the film numbers. And then here's where he married Jesse. And again, we, we actually would have those on microfilm in local history when we reopen. No, I don't know when. Okay, that's most of what I wanted to cover on Ancestry. And then the another fun thing to do is to go back and research it, newspapers. So you go back, you go in the same way, you go back to the, the A to L list of databases, click on N for newspapers. And when you do that, this is the screen that comes up. And they show several different things. So you don't have to limit yourself to Rockford or Chicago, but see what's in there that's helpful to you. It's always good to check out the indexes and see what, uh, what's available. So then what you do is you actually click on Rockford Register Star, the blue. Then you get this little drop down menu here that says find full text articles, et cetera. Then you click on the blue, click here to log in and access the Rockford Register Star. And this again, you click on that and you have to type in your library card and your PIN. And then you get a screen that looks like this. Not to confuse you, but do list where it says America's Historical Newspapers. If you click on that, what you actually get are just Rockford Historical Newspapers. You can also click on Rockford Register Star Access World News, which are the more recent issues. But to cover everything, go down to the bottom part, Access World News Historical and Current, click on Rockford Register Star Collections. And feel free to look at these other collections. I'm just narrowing it down to Rockford Register Star today. Um, below that, there is also a Chicago Tribune Historical Archives, and that's fun to work with too. So let's say that we have clicked on the bottom entry for Rockford Register Star collection, and we're going to get a screen like this, which will list all 14 entries of Rockford newspapers from 1855 to date. So if you, I don't know how well you can read it on this screen, but you can see the dates like the Daily Gazette, um, 1879 to 1891, the Register 1873 to 19 to 1891. And then when the Register Gazette combined 1891 to 1930, Morning Star 1889 to 1979 and so on. So these are going to be the newspapers in here, the time period, um, I wanted to show, I will show you one thing a little later too, but if you go down to the second entry for Rockford Register Star parentheses IL, it says 2018 current, and then you go over and it says image. Keep that in mind. Now the 1999, there's also a text version and that's just, it's just what it says. It's just the text. If there was a photograph, it would show up at the bottom of that text saying, photograph un or chart unable to reproduce, see microfilm. So again, when you can go for the image, go for the image. On uh, the next screen, okay, I put Robert Tinker's name in, micro in uh, quotes. 
because if you don't, you get everything for Robert and you get everything for Tinker. And even putting Robert Tinker in quotes, you get 1,122 results. And it actually defaults to newest, but because I'm a nerdy person, I always click oldest because that's fun for me. Other ways you could search, also search, again in quotes, for Robert Paul Tinker or Robert H. Tinker or R. H. Tinker, or in his case, Mayor Tinker. You could search him all those ways and get different results every time. On the second line, you could click a date. Say you put 1860 to 1870, you would have fewer entries. And actually, when it turns out, when I left the dates open and got my 1,000 plus entries, the first entry is from the Rockford Weekly Register Gazette, February 20th, 1858. And so I went and clicked on that. And this is actually, his name shows up at the bottom of an article, which was talking about the uh, Manny Reaper factory and what a big concern it was. And it was a big concern. It was probably the first big industry that Rockford had. A lot of uh, historians feel that when John Manny brought his Reaper factory to Rockford, that that is the beginning of Rockford as an industrial city. And of course, it was built down on the river, west side of the river, because they had harnessed the water by building a dam, and it was the water power district. Because guess what, folks? 1858. No, there's no electricity. So they talk about the different stuff, the cost of the building, some lots that have been laid down, and some of the different people who were already working at the Reaper factory. And at that point, Homer Knowlton and Robert Tinker were both working as clerks. He hasn't even worked up to bookkeeper yet, but he will. Oh, I need to go back. Sorry. Um, when you have what is basically the full page of the paper, you just have to adjust it so you can read it. Across the top of the article, you'll see a variety of things. You could click on the envelope for email and email that entire page to yourself or someone else. You can use their clipping tool, or if you have a snipping tool on your computer, you could snip. You could print out, but again, if you're going to print out, you'd want, you wouldn't want to do the full page because it would be too small to read. You can also download it and do see what you want to do with that. And there are links. I, I tend to use mainly either the email or the print or the download. So, but you do have a lot of options there so you can save your work. Okay, I mentioned uh, Rockford Register Star 2008. No, Rockford Register Star 2018 to date have the images. When you click on that one, they actually show you uh, a calendar. Um, on the calendar where it says change year, you could change it. Be, it begins with 2018, so you could look 2018, 19, and 20. And you can actually look at the current day's newspaper from home on your computer. Now, I pulled the entry up yesterday, so I pulled up yesterday's entry because that's what I was working on. It. And we're finding region eyes reopening rules. So again, this is about businesses being able to slowly reopen and we hope carefully. But if you needed to read your daily paper and you had your computer on with your library card, you can certainly access, the, access it that way. And again, you have the same options across the top if you need to email something to someone or save it one way or another. So that's some of the ways it goes. Now, I just kind of threw this in. Reference USA is not strictly speaking a genealogy tool. It's, it was actually designed for businessmen. It's a great way to find consumers. 
if you were making up a mailing list and wanted to send your advertising information to people in, say, a specific zip code area or something like that, or if you wanted to mail it to different people, because it includes a lot of interesting information. It also is a good place to look for businesses. The top part is U.S. businesses throughout the country, uh, jobs, internships, that includes Canada, uh, U.S. standard white pages, Canadian white pages. And then there's one here, U.S. consumers and lifestyles. And this would be if you were trying to get your message out to specific people. Your search screen is going to look like this after you've turned it. What I did was I just typed in Smith and just for fun, I typed Rockford, Iowa because it's a small, smaller town to deal with. So I did that and I uh, found 18 results, 18 different people named Smith living in Rockford, Iowa. And you can see it gives their first and last name, their street address, zip code, and where available a phone number. Not all phone numbers are available. Then I just clicked on the top one, no particular reason. So you have information about Mr. Smith, that he's lived there seven years. And then down below, they might tell you what the household income is supposed to be, estimated value of the house, how many people in that area have owner-occupied housing, and then some census statistics. There is another screen that's, or a bottom of the screen sometimes shows up where if you've ever filled out one of those forms that talk about um, your preferences. So there's a preference page too. So if it had said that John Smith was an avid camper and I had a camping company and I wanted to let him know that I had some great deals on tents, that might be a name I'd want to put on a list to mail out to people. So it's, it's just kind of an interesting tool. You can search it to look up neighbors. And uh, there's a lot of fun stuff out there. And it's all considered public information, people. Okay, I probably talked too fast. But that's basically what I'm covering. I want to thank you for joining us. And for the next 20 minutes or so, I can take any questions and answer what I can. I do want to remind you, next week's virtual lunch and, uh, lunch and learn will be Kathy Kressel. Next Thursday, June 4th, uh, 1230 to 1.45 p.m., where she will be talking about ghastly crimes and ghostly encounters. And she's great to listen to. She has a lot of wonderful information. If you haven't already signed up for it, I think you'd enjoy listening to it. My email is here at the bottom of the screen if you need to contact me by that way. Um, anybody have any questions, comments? Andrew, can you uh, unblock people, please? So if you have a question for Gene, please feel free to uh, unmute yourself and ask, or you can also utilize the, the chat feature as well. I've got a question. What is the difference between the um, library edition of Ancestry and a personal account? Oh, okay, the basic uh, the basic difference, uh, I believe Ancestry has two different uh, types for individuals. One is for the U.S. and one is international, and the international costs a lot more, of course. The library edition seems to include international information. I think the big difference is you can't come to the library and enter your family tree on any through any of our computers that would not work to enter a family tree through ancestry you would have to have a private subscription does that help yes it does thanks okay okay I, i'm um i'm looking at this chat note here um from kathy Yes, uh, you you just have to go in through the, the database index rather than through the genealogy part to be able to access Ancestry through the library. 
Uh, someone else has a question. What are good software companies to consider for genealogy research? Well, a lot of that's personal opinion. Um, a lot of people really like Family Tree Maker. You can also enter programs through like myheritage.com or at familysearch.org. Those are some there that people like. Um, your best thing is to talk to friends, other genealogists, and see what they recommend. Any comments from people who might have used any of the different uh, software companies to have a favorite? Okay, um, I will say these are just some of the databases that are out there and some, some work better than others and sources. Always check your sources, record your sources, even if it's mother's birth and death record book. That's still, that's a source. And since something like that, your mother might've kept at the time of people being born or dying it would be considered a reliable source because she was keeping track of it as it actually happened. Okay, is there a way to access the library if you live out of the area? Oh, well, you can go to the website and use some of like uh, Heritage Quest is, a, is you don't need to have a library card to access Heritage Quest. There's a lot of good stuff in that that you could go into our library website to use without a library card. Um, you can just try the different databases and see how far you can get. If they ask for the card, it's not likely to help you. The only people that can use the databases at Rockford Public Library, the, the ones that require a card number, you have to own property in the city or live in the city and your landlord is paying it. That's how you get a library card within the city limits. Other people, as I say, see how far you can get with a specific index. You should be able to get into Heritage Quest without any trouble and see how far you can go with that one. Um, Try, to try our databases. You can look at our card catalog and see what's out there. Does this help you at all? Or is there a specific thing you're looking for that maybe I can talk about? And of course you can always email us and uh, we'll see if we can help you with your question. You can pay a fee to obtain a library card if you live outside the city. I think it's a hundred, it's about one hundred twenty-two dollars a year. Is that correct, Andrew? I believe so. Yes. Okay, you would have to do that. The other thing, though, if you live in a different, if you live in a library district in Illinois, you have to. You would want to get your library card through your local library district first because that's where you're paying your taxes. You can then get reciprocal use through different libraries in Illinois. That does not unfortunately give you access to our databases from home. You would have to come to one of the Rockford library locations when we reopen and use the databases here, the ones that respect specifically ask for a library card. But any of the ones that you can get in without using a library card, go ahead and use them. Okay, here's a question. Is the prior se session on genealogy available to view? I think it's probably out there on YouTube by now. 
<laughs> I haven't looked. A uh, little bit embarrassed, I guess. Um, are the presentations available as a handout to view? If anyone is interested in a handout, uh, if you want to email me down there at jlithgo at rockfordpubliclibrary.org, I'd be happy to send you a handout. Uh, okay, is there a club or weekly or monthly genealogy meeting sponsored through the library? We don't sponsor anything. Um, there is the Winnebago and Boone County Genealogy Society, uh, which is a good one to join. Um, actually, next Thursday evening, June 4th at 6.30, I'm going to be the speaker for that meeting, which again, that will be available on Zoom to members of the Winnebago and Boone County Genealog Genealogical Society. And I'm going to be talking on Dig Deeper, some of the more in-depth parts of genealogy. So you could go to the Winnebago and Boone County Genealogical Society and uh, take a look. Enjoy it if you want to. It's a, it's a really good society. They have, they have, they've had some really good speakers. Over the summer, we're, they're trying a new thing where we meet Thursday nights. I think it's June and July and maybe August, and then go back to the Saturday meetings, September, October, November. We're just not yet meeting in person these days. Does that help? Okay, uh, at this point, the library does not have a current list of translators. Uh, if you're looking for a German translator, my suggestion would be to contact Rock Valley College or Rockford University. I think the German club is still active, the Germania club. They have, as far as I know, an active website. You could contact their website and see what they can how they can help you with. Um, and you should check with the translator to see what the uh, what their fees are. Oh, and Diane, thank you. Yes, do go to Facebook for the Winnebago Boone County genealogy page. Thanks, Diane. And then you can sign up for the event. Any other questions? Anybody have any suggestions for programs they'd like to see us doing? We can't promise, but if you have ideas, we'd certainly have to explore them. Are there any other questions at this point? Oh, Kathy, you're welcome. Well, if that's it, I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. It's, it's always fun for me to talk about genealogy and try and help people with their questions. If you have other questions, again, you can click on 
You can send an email to me at jlithgowrockfordpubliclibrary.org. And please join us next week, same time, same station, um, Thursday, June 4th, 2020, uh, beginning at 1230. And Kathy Kressel is going to talk to us about ghastly crimes and ghostly encounters. And thank you all so much for coming and hope to see you around, uh, particularly when we open up again.